So looking back and seeing my journey as a filmmaker and what I kind of did to start making money as a somewhat beginner content creator, I can see some like critical things that I did in that situation to make it work and actually create a successful business as a content creator. And I thought today I will share those tips and a few of those very critical things with you so that you can have better luck at setting yourself up and positioning yourself to start making money as a content creator. Okay, me and Hannah just got our motorbike licenses so we can finally actually ride these on the road legally now, which we definitely never did before. So we're just gonna put some fuel in, we're gonna head down there to a really cool road. Okay, so let's talk to you guys a little bit about some of the tips that you actually need to follow if you want to start making money as a beginner content creator. You can see that we're going to be like cruising around. You come and hang out with us today while we talk about these tips. We've come down here to this beautiful little spot. Today's video is sponsored by Zyro, which is a really intuitive and easy to use website builder. We're going to talk about them a little bit later on in this video. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is just finding your niche that you want to kind of put yourself in and gear yourself towards getting more clients in that same niche. So in the beginning, I feel like it's kind of less important, especially for me, when I was first starting out, I kind of would just take anything I could get, anyone that wanted me to create something for them, I would do it. This is a great time where you guys can build up your skills, get a little bit better, you can diversify your specialty. And then as you get a little further along in your journey, you really need to start to niche yourself down so you can be really good at one specific style of content creation. I think that is really important to do, especially as you do start getting a little bit better. Another thing that you might notice and something that I noticed is as you do start to take on all of these different projects, even if you aren't sure what you want your niche to necessarily be, the more you do all of these different ones, you might find you're particularly good at one of them, or you might just really enjoy a certain type of video, and you can kind of find your niche in that way. It kind of presents itself to you. When you are doing this, don't be too specific and make your niche too narrow because you're gonna close yourself off to a lot of opportunities that might be there. So keep it kind of wide so that you don't limit yourself. Okay, we're gonna jump back on the bikes and go grab a coffee because it's pretty early in the morning right now yes. and I need a coffee. Cool little spot here at the beach. There's almost waves. I kind of wish we could surf, but it's just a little bit too small for surfing. There's supposed to be waves. There's supposed to be lots of stuff, yeah. but it's never happened. Maybe later, because there's a couple of fun ones. But anyway, let's get to the next tip and we'll go grab a coffee. The next thing I think it's super important for you to do is to create a portfolio or a showreel. And I know you guys have probably heard about this before. You probably know you need to have some sort of portfolio but more specifically, I think it's a good idea to create a few different styles of portfolios and a few different styles of showreel so that you can send them off to different people in particular. If you are gonna be shooting something like a festival, for example, maybe you can create a showreel that shows that sort of environment. Maybe you've filmed some like day clubs and festivals. Likewise, if you're gonna be sending off your showreel to like a fashion brand, you don't want to send that same showreel of the festivals. You want to have a sort of separate tailored one to those brand style videos and you can send that there. Especially in the beginning when you guys are taking on a lot more different styles of work and not niching down too hard like we said, you can have those multiple different little portfolios and showreels so you can target them to each one of the clients that you guys are trying to work with. Okay, now let's go get those coffees. Yes. <laughs> 
Okay, now we can get to the good stuff. <laughs> you might even say kind of controversial stuff because the next tip is to do free work. And there's so many people that say you shouldn't do free work and all of these different reasons. I think this is arguably the like one thing that is most attributed to the success that I had when actually starting to get money for content creation. And the reason is, is when you start to do free work, you're making connections, you're networking, you're showing people your work, you can create something for someone for free and then maybe in the future they need someone and they're willing to pay, you're gonna be first in line because you've already created that video or piece of content for them and it would have been good hopefully and then they're gonna be like, let's get that guy to do it, he's already done it for us. Maybe someone asks them who created that video for them and they can refer you to them and then you get paid work from that. Doing that free work builds relationships with people in the industry and in the field that you're trying to associate yourself with and it's the best way to kind of get your foot in the door and actually start getting some clients and people that are going to be willing to pay. So go ahead and do that free work. It's definitely worth it in my opinion. Check us out. <laughs> Where we are in a place called Musenberg, this is the beach like at our house kind of. We have shark flags because there's so many sharks out here that there's people that actually sit on the mountain up there and whenever they see a shark in the water, they put a white flag up and a shark siren goes off <laughs> and it's super scary when you're in the water. Even if you know there's not really a shark like where you are, as soon as they that siren goes off, <laughs> Everybody just paddles for the beach and like gets out of the water as fast as they can. <laughs> so let's talk about the fourth thing and that is going to be about your portfolio and how you should build it. Now, here's the thing. I see a lot of people that create their portfolios on something like Instagram and I don't think that's the correct way to do it. I personally think that you need a dedicated space for all of your work so you can showcase that. And the reason is, is because on Instagram, you aren't only sharing the best of the best of your content. Sometimes you're gonna be sharing stuff that's like kinda cool, sometimes stuff that's just relevant to something else. It's not the absolute cream of the crop, your best ever stuff. So having a dedicated portfolio spot means that you can curate it to be the best representation of your work and you can leave it like that and only update it if you have something better than what's already there. And that brings us to the sponsor of today's video which is Zyro. Zyro is an affordable and super powerful online web builder and if you guys are like, oh, I can't be bothered to build a whole website, that's such a mission, it's so complicated, it's not with Zyro, it's super easy and rarely easy to understand. If you are not very good at that stuff, you'll still be able to put together a really nice professional looking website. Zyra has some pretty crazy deals going on right now. You can get over 70% off or three months completely free if you go for the yearly plan. You can use the code Sean or you can head down into the description and the link is gonna be right there for you guys. I wanna just quickly show you a little demo of how I structured my website and how I built it. You can check it out right here. So you can see that I've laid out some of my work right on the front pages. I have some photos, I have a couple of videos and different things that I wanna showcase to the people that I'm gonna be sending this to when I'm reaching out to brands. You can see how easy it is to build the website. You can literally just look on the side panel and drag and drop pretty much anything you want. If you want an image, you can just drag and drop it, change the image to whatever you want it to be. Likewise with a video, you can drag this little video tab over, put in the link to whatever video you want it to be, whether that's on Vimeo or YouTube. Same if you're wanting to add any text or any other assets onto the website. It's as simple as dragging and dropping it right onto the page. You guys can go and check out this website. I'll leave a link to my actual website in the description as well if you just wanna go check it out for fun or just for interest sake. If you guys are creators and you're looking to send out your work and show it and try get money back for the services that you're offering, having a legit website that looks nice is super vital and by using Zyro, anyone can create something super professional and functional with like 
minutes. It takes like hardly any effort. It's super, super easy. Go and check it out or use code Sean to get to tip five, which is going to be reaching out to companies and brands that you think fits within your rough niche and guide of what kind of content you're gonna be creating. So there's a lot of different ways that you guys can go about doing this. I think one of the most important things is finding appropriate brands that you think your work would suit and that you can both mutually benefit from the collaboration that's gonna take place of working together. I sometimes would reach out to brands on Instagram, just give a very brief pitch and ask if I could get a contact email for someone in the marketing department. Usually in my experience, whoever's in charge of the marketing department, especially for smaller brands, is also managing the Instagram accounts. They're gonna see your message, they can send you that email and you can send them a proper pitch via email, it's much more professional. Otherwise, if you can get hold of an actual marketing email somewhere, maybe it's on their website or one of their social pages, you can just directly message them and pitch what you guys have to offer. I think the most important thing with this is don't pitch too hard about yourself. Rather, just have a brief introduction of yourself, what you do and what you can offer them and tell them how they can benefit from what you are offering. That's gonna be much more beneficial if you put yourself in their shoes. It's not too important your whole story and what you're doing. They wanna know what you can do for them and how they can benefit from what you're offering them. So reach out to them, email them, make sure you have that nice portfolio that you've created with Zyro and you can put that in your pitch deck. That's gonna be your best bet as to start generating those clients and that income to start actually making money as a beginner content creator. That's gonna be it for this one, guys. Cruising around on our motorbikes was so, so fun today. I can't wait to go on a bunch of other little missions. Hannah and I are gonna go exploring. We're gonna put surf racks on the motorbikes. We can go to the beach, make all sorts of fun vlogs about it. And I'm excited to take you along for all of those little missions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you think these tips were useful and hopefully they get you 